I got a question for you guys. Have you ever seen a true crime Netflix documentary? The lighting on these interviews are insane and I'm absolutely obsessed with the way these interviews are shot and produced. And that's the inspiration behind today's video. I'm gonna break down every step of this lighting setup. I'm gonna go over the concept, the gear I use, lighting placement and color, and even throw in a few bonus tips at the end. So let's get started. All right, so let's quickly start with the concept and the idea. My goal is to make this feel like a nighttime interview. I wanted the lighting to be moody and have shadow and contrast to the face, but not too much to the point where you couldn't see one side of the face. I wanted a little bit of color contrast between warm and cool tones, but nothing way too over the top and saturated. And then I wanted to try to create a fake moonlight. Now that I had an idea and some reference photos, it was time to find a spot in my house that could actually make this work. Anytime I shoot, I always start by taking my camera and moving it around until I find a location in a home or a space that I actually like. Now, I chose this particular location mainly because of the window and the empty wall space I had in the background. And I knew that if I actually just moved a few things around, I could actually turn this into what I envisioned. When I finally chose my background, I began setting up the camera that would frame me between the window and the lampshade in the background. And that's because I knew I wanted to use color contrast to give the shot some depth. Like I said in the beginning, I knew I wanted to use that cooler tone to help emulate that moonlight. And then I also wanted to use the warmer tone of the lamp to give that color contrast in the background. But more on that later. Now that I had my camera angle, it was time to start placing my lights. For my key light, I was using a cool cam 300X attached to an Aperture Light Dome 3. And I absolutely love the Light Dome 3 because it comes with three layers of diffusion. It's super easy to set up, especially if you're a one man band. I can get this thing up and running within five seconds. It has three total layers of diffusion, two different white diffusion fabrics and a black honeycomb grid, which is used to help focus the light, which I almost always use because it really helps you control the light coming from this dome and total control of your light as a DP is something that you always want. And this is what it looks like with this light turned on. Now for my key light, I placed it somewhere between 15 and 45 degrees away from my face in an attempt to create a little bit of shadow on the right side of my face. Now, whenever I'm lighting my subject's face, the first thing that I consider is properly exposing them. The next thing that I consider is where am I going to place this light to create the shadow and depth that I want for the shot? Right now, we have what they call a Rembrandt look. This is where you have an upside down triangle on the right side of my face. Now, the next light that we added was a hair light. And for the hair light, we're using a mini softbox and the light we're using is a Coolcam 200X. Now, our key light was set to 5600 Kelvin, but for our hair light, we're gonna set this to a warmer tone like 2700 Kelvin. And this is what it looks like with this light turned on. As you guys can see, the hair light is just giving a rim of light on my right shoulder and the right side of my face, along with lighting up a little bit of the background with some warm light. Now these two lights together lighting me up obviously don't look right. And you might even be wondering why are you using two different color temperatures from the key light and the hair light. And that's because we're gonna use a warm practical light bulb in the lampshade in the background. And to do this, we're gonna take an aperture B7C light bulb and place it in the lampshade behind us. And this is what it looks like with the light turned on. Now, as the viewer, you start to feel like the lampshade is creating all of this warm light in the background, including the warm light that's giving that rim and hair light behind me. And this is what they call motivated lighting. Now, looking at this frame as a whole, it starts to look pretty good, but you can tell that the window and curtains are way too underexposed. And as a whole, there's really not that much contrast happening in the frame. So what we're going to do to fix this is set up a C stand outside the window and we use an aperture 120D with a blue gel to shoot some light through the window. And this is what it looks like with that light turned on. Now, this light solves two big issues. Number one, it brings up the exposure levels on the right side of the frame. But the other thing that it does is it creates color contrast between the warm lamp light in the background and the cooler moonlight coming in through the window. And this was something that I planned the entire shot around. I knew that I wanted to use a color contrast between the warm lamp light and the cooler window light. And I basically framed my subject, which was me, around both of these. So you had a little bit of warmth to the left of the frame and a little bit of coolness on the right of the frame. The other thing to take note of is that these curtains that you see in the frame weren't actually there. I actually propped these curtains up on a C-stand 
to soften up the light coming through the window, as well as give the overall frame a sense of symmetry. I also added this plant and coffee table in the background to help dress the frame a little bit as well. Now, the last light that we added was just a bit of warm fill light to the right side of my face. Using an Aperture Infinity bar matching the same Kelvin as the lamp and the hair light in the background to keep a consistent look. So this is what it looks like with the light turned on. And as you guys can see, it just adds a little bit of warm fill light on the right side of my face, along with a little bit of fill light on the back wall. And all I had to do to rig this up was attach to the staircase using the magnets on the back, which are extremely strong. And to be real with you guys, this Aperture Infinity Bar has become one of my favorite tools. It's so lightweight and easy to rig up, and you can really pick any color to match any environment that you want. I definitely recommend checking out this Aperture Infinity Bar. It has saved me so many times. And if you guys wanna check that out, I actually have a 10% discount code for anything Aperture in the description down below. And that is how I achieved this true crime inspired interview lighting. Now just a quick bonus tip for you guys. Make sure that you keep in mind wardrobe. I intentionally wore this cooler blue looking shirt to create that contrast between my skin tone and my shirt, as well as keep continuity throughout the frame. If I wore a, a white shirt, or maybe even I wore a warmer colored shirt, like a red or orange, it, it just wouldn't have kept a balance throughout this frame. But I knew that if most of the lighting in the room was gonna be warm tone with a little bit of contrasting color throughout the, you know, coming through the window, I knew that putting on this shirt would kind of balance out that color tone. I strongly suggest asking your subjects to bring a couple of different colored shirts uh, preferably something plain that doesn't have any logos or any kind of graphic design on it. And then the other thing that I think is really important to think about is how you're going to frame your subject and your background to kind of create this cohesive look that you're going for. You know, are we using daylight? Are we using, are we blocking out the daylight? Are we using kind of all our own lighting? What kind of look am I going for and what am I trying to achieve? I think that's so important and it, it sounds super simple, but it'll actually help you guys tremendously when you are trying to light for your interviews. And if you guys want to learn more about documentary filmmaking, me and my team are producing a documentary film course that we hope to have out sometime in 2024. But if you guys want to be notified when this course drops, then sign up for this email list and I'm going to leave in a link right up here. This course is going to break down every aspect of documentary filmmaking from pre-production to post-production and even selling your film to major streaming platforms. I would like to thank you guys for stopping in and hanging out with me and I hope to have a lot more of these tutorials coming out in the near future but until then i'll uh, see you guys next time deuces